Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to learn how to analyze a PCR data uh, using a particular package in R, which is called the PCR package. So you can analyze any kind of QRD PCR data, which has got a CT value or CQ value, which you can directly feed into the PCR package. And this is going to give you the analysis based on whatever method that you uh, that you select for the PCR package to work you need to install the PCR package so to do that you can just type in install packages and inside the brackets you can uh, write the name of the package in single quotes so for this it's going to be PCR and I've already installed the package so I'm not going to do this once you're done writing this, you can just go to the end of the line and hit command enter to you know, initiate the installation process. And once it is done, you're good to go. Now, when you start a new script in R and you want to use the utilities that are inside the PCR package, what you need to do, you need to, you need to say library and inside the bracket, you need to call the package. And after that, uh, you can just again, go to the end of the line and hit command enter. So that's going to load the package onto your environment. So for me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load all of these packages which I'm going to need. So first is the PCR package. The second is the tidyverse. I'm going to use um, certain uh, functions which are inside different packages grouped together inside tidyverse. For reading the Excel files, uh, we use a package called read Excel because my data, the raw data, the CT value is stored in an Excel file. And the, finally, the R color viewer, it is for having a set of color palettes for your graphs that you make. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to hit command enter. And this will be loaded onto your, you know, onto your environment. So next we can start importing the data that is the Excel file that we have. So in order to do that over here, you go to files and you go to this three dots and you go to the location. This will open the viewfinder and you can go to the location mines in desktop. So over here, oh, the desktop is already opened. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this test.xlsx, this is an Excel file. Click on this and go import data set. So this is the data that we're going to be working with. So we have GAPDH, which is the reference gene or the housekeeping gene. And we have another gene called PPR gamma. And we have four treatments, including the control, the control T1, T2, and T3. Every treatment has got a duplicate value. So two for control, two for T1, and so on. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this. So whatever I change over here, you can see a snippet of this over here. I'm going to name this into PCR underscore data. Otherwise, it's going to take the name of the Excel file itself. So PCR underscore data. And I'm going to uncheck this open in data viewfinder. So once it is done, you can see the name has changed over here. I'm going to, do, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to cancel I'm going to paste this over here now you hit command enter and you can see an object has been added to your environment so if you click on this you're going to see the exact same table that you have in your excel file now the problem with this is when I feed this particular table into the PCR package it's going to take the first column as values also and it's going to throw me an error because this does not have any value. It's not have any numeric value. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean this up and get rid of the first column so that I have only the second and the third column. In order to do that, uh, we're going to use a particular function called select, which comes from a package called dplyr, which is again coming from uh, the group of packages, the tidyverse. So in order to do this, we're going to write PCR data. That is the object that we created. And I'm going to pipe this into the next command, which is select. And I'm going to say from column two to column three. 
if you want to learn about pipe operator I uh, can see my other videos which I'm gonna be linking down in the description or I can click on the card which is popping right now you can see what the pipe operator does and to use this pipe operator you need the tidyverse once we're done with that we can hit command enter and you can see it has got rid of the first uh, first column and given us the second and the third column the values now this is not yet stored inside any variable it is not an object yet because you cannot see anything over here uh, this is just the PCR data the Excel file we are going to store it inside a variable which I'm going to call PCR once we write that I'm going to again hit command enter to make the object so you can see you can see a new object has been created and if I hit on this it's going to show only the second and the third so this was the Excel file that we imported and this is uh, this is the this is the table getting rid of the first column now we can start uh, you know arranging the table that we have for analysis the first thing that we need to do is we need to you know group each of the values into the different treatments like control t1 t2 and t3 in order to do that I'm going to create a variable called group grp and I'm going to do a concatenation inside which I'm going to say replicate or rep inside that I'm going to put again a concatenation inside which I'm going to put uh, the name of the treatment so control with small c and the second one is t1 the third one is t2 um, sorry quotes t2 then quotes t3 and finally I'm going to come out of this concatenation and to and say again c for another concatenation this I'm going to put the number of replicates each of the group has so for me to set straightforward over here it's going to be two for each so two 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 and two once you're done you go to the end of the line hit command enter it's going to add another um, variable or, or, or an object to your environment so now you can use this in the analysis all right so now we are uh, ready for feeding this into the commands from the PCR packet I'm going to start off with the object that I created called PCR that's the subset table that I created for the analysis I'm going to pipe this into a command from the PCR package or a function from the PCR package called PCR um, underscore analyze so this is a function from the PCR package itself inside this I'm going to give a couple of arguments starting with the group variable group underscore var equals to the group that we just created so grp the next one is going to be reference underscore gene this is my gap dh so I'm going to hit quotes and inside that gap th and to spell exactly uh, as it is in the data so this was the data right the subset data so all in smalls so all in smalls over here as well then I need the reference group so reference group is something um, that you can consider as a frame of reference which is always going to be one and compared to that the full change is going to be calculated so for me it is the control group normally it's going to be control group for you as well and finally I'm going to use the method argument and give delta underscore delta underscore ct right. so once this is done I can go to the end and hit command enter so the e was missing in reference and again I'm gonna hit command enter and you can see over here you have a table where you have the groups control t1 t2 and t3 the gene you want to calculate the the full change of your gene of interest not gap dh you're using gap dh just as a reference and you have the relative expression this is what we want 
So this is the thing that we want. Now, this, this whole thing, what we can do, we can just, uh, you know, we can just make a plot out of it. We can just make a bar, bar plot out of it. And for that, the easiest way is to say plot equals true. And this will create a bar plot. But this plot does not look so good. So what we're going to do, we are going to feed whatever we made this table that we got into ggplot, which is a fantastic package which comes with the tidyverse. And we can make a better looking plot. It's not so black and white. And we can use the colors from the, our color brewer in order to color the different bars in different colors. So for that, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, hit, I'm gonna delete that. So first, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put this into a variable called qpcr. I'm gonna assign this to a variable, and again, I'm gonna select all of this, and we go command enter. So now, if I hit qpcr, hit command enter, the same table is going to appear. And finally, I can. Uh, so this qpcr basically the, this table. So what I can do, I can feed this qpcr. I can pipe this into you know the ggplot functions and make a beautiful graph out of it. So I'm, I'm not going to type all of that right now. I'm going to copy paste a snippet which I've already created for this. And um, uh, This whole code is going to be linked somewhere, you know, it, uh, most probably in my um, GitHub repository. So I'm linking, I'm going to be linking it down in the description. You can, you don't need to worry about writing all of this you can just you know go to the github repository and get the code so this is beautifying the graph that's it nothing else so what i did was i i i piped qpcr this table into ggplot and ggplot works with aesthetics that is your x and y axis so my x is group and my y axis is relative expression so my x is my group and relative expression becomes my y and the the kind of graph that i want i want a bar graph so the geometry would be geom underscore bar it's static equals identity so this is important otherwise you won't recognize uh, i mean you won't leave leave the bar graph as it is and then i put a color and then fill so this this R color brewer uh, comes into play over here. So the color is basically your your border color, but your fill is whatever the color is inside the, inside each bar. So for, so in in case of fill, I used brewer palette. This is a command or a function that comes from the R color brewer, and the number of bars that I have and the name of the color palette so if you google our color brewer you can have a list of color palettes that are there in the package and you can use anything that you want so i like this pastel one and then i used this uh this geom underscore error bar to draw the error bars and make them a little bit tidy now if i hit okay i'll hit enter and then i'll go through the process so once I'm done with that so this is a much better looking graph what do you say so where was this geom error bar so again it works with aesthetics so your y minimum that is your y minimum and your y max y maximum so this would be a lower and upper which is coming from that table itself so you have your lower and upper so these has got some values which is which will pull the error bar to the lowest and the highest value and you can change the width to something like 0 0.2 which will in decrease these lines previously it was till the width of the bar graph for each bar that will reduce it to there so i'm going to change this and show it to you so if i put 0 0.5 
it increases this a little bit. So normally I put it to 0 0.2 and that looks good. And then I put a theme and labels. I mean, if you want, if you want to learn exclusively all of this, you can refer to my previous video where I, where I exclusively teach you how to make a bar chart. And I use plain vanilla um, R codes, not any PCR package to analyze a PCR data. So that is, that is divided into four different videos. You can watch that. I'm going to link the playlist down over here somewhere. So then I customize the theme a little bit and I change the, you know, the rhythm of the Y axis and put it to 2.5 from zero to 2.5. And you know, normally the, the, the bar charts would have a gap over here at the bottom that is closed by this expand uh, argument. So that's it. You can make a beautiful looking bar graph from this or any kind of um, graph from the data that you have and you know the the final part is the statistical analysis for that you can again refer to my previous videos on R uh, I have went detailed I can do statistical analysis postdoc test and all that stuff so yeah that's about it for this video hope you learned something new and I'm be back with a new one bye bye